Okay, so for resizing, I have my dialog box opened, and I am actually going to slide this over. And on that dialog box, there is a box with a little check mark in it. And it, next to that, it says lock aspect ratio. I am going to unclick that box. Um, basically, that would just keep the proportions correct. I'm not too worried about the proportions at this point. I just want to see what it looks like when I resize the image. So I unclicked that. My height, since this is a portrait style picture, is going to be 8. If you had a landscape style picture, you would probably want to put your height at 6 instead. You just reverse them. So height is 8. My width is 6. Now I'm just going to see what this looks like. I'm going to click OK. Okay, now looking at the image, it did kind of squish it a little bit. It's not terrible though. I think that I could get away with this. If, however, it doesn't look okay, you might need to do some cropping. So I'm going to click the undo button, or I can do control alt Z on my keyboard. There we go. Now it's back to its original size. So what I could do is I could then do a little bit of cropping. It looks like I might have to do some cropping in regards to the height. It's just, it's a little too tall proportions. Um, so I think I can just crop like this. I'm going to use my crop tool, which was right next to the size tool. And it gives you these little dash marks and you can kind of play around uh, with the cropping. I'm gonna crop it just a little tiny bit and click out to keep that crop. Now once again, I need to change the size. At the moment, it says it's 8.6 by 6.5. When I double click on this, I can go back to that dialog box and unclick that lock wrap aspect ratio and set my height again as eight and my width is six. Okay, that looks much better. I didn't really um, lose any proportions. It doesn't look squished. It doesn't look stretched. You don't want your image to look stretched or squished or super grainy or super pixely. Um, remember, this is our tool for creating a larger grid drawing. We make our image as a 6 by 8 or 8 by 6 image, however you want to um, do that. We make that th these sizes because our paper size is 18 inches by 24 inches. So there's some math involved there. Uh, since our image is 6 by 8, our drawing is going to be 3 times as large. So if I take 6 times 3, that equals 18. If I take 8 times 3, that equals 24. So 18 inches by 24 inches is our paper size. That's how big your drawing is going to be. Your image, the reference image, is 6 by 8 or 8 by 6. So that's three times as small. So we're basically taking this image and we're going to be enlarging it three times its original size. And that's where the grid method really comes in handy. At this point, how I have it resized here, I'm pretty happy with it. I think this is great. It's right at the right size. It's eight by six. It's got a good range of value. I'm happy with it. Now all I need to do is go to File Print and if you've been in this computer lab before, you probably have the printer added. You would need to add the printer E231. If it is not added, I will show you how to do that. We go down to our Windows icon, click Devices and Printers, and on here I already have it, but I'm going to add it anyways. So I'm going to pretend I don't have it. So in here, I can right click or I can click add a printer right up here. So add a printer. It's going to be a network, wireless, or Bluetooth printer. I'm going to scroll through and try and find E231. Here it is. Okay, it's a CN and then E231. That refers to the room number and the printer number. So I click next. It downloads the drivers pretty quickly. It says I've successfully added the printer. I click next and finish. And okay, now it's added onto my list of printers. I can go through here when I'm ready to print my image in Word and find my printer. So again, make sure it's the right printer. E231 looks good. 
I only need to print one sided. I only need one copy. You don't need five million copies. Please do not put in five million copies, just one. And then you're going to click print. And when you click print, it should send to the printer and print your portrait. It's not a bad idea just in case to save this in case you lose your reference image. It's a pain in the butt to have to reprint it. So go to File, Save As. You can choose whichever name. Make sure you save it under your U drive. Click Save, and it should be saved and ready to go. When we get back to the classroom, all you need to do is cut out your image, and then you're going to start measuring one-inch marks for your one-inch grid.